Hey, what's up guys? Daisuke coming back to you live from the couch. And just wanted to come up and do a video uh, today regarding another video that I saw by a girl named Emily. Sorry, I can't remember what her screen name was. But uh, she was talking about a phenomenon called the AFWM pheno uh, hatred phenomenon. And what it stands for is Asian female, white male, uh, couple relationship hatred. Um, well, it seems to be that a lot of people on the internet land uh, hate hate it hate seeing Asian girls date white guys, and so um, I was reminded of something that I wrote in 2006 and posted up on Face uh, MySpace. This is before Facebook and uh, YouTube was popular, but um, I got a good amount of traction um, writing that bulletin. Um, and I wanted to share you guys with with, with you guys. Um, this is from 2006, December 2006, but I think it's still very relevant. And so I thought I'd share that with you. So here we go. A while back, I came across a few net articles pertaining to the objectification of Asian or Asian American women in white American European cultures. These various articles brought up numerous points about how society, media, the hegemony, etc. places these exploited women of Asian descent on some kind of exotic sexual pedestal while leaving the counterpart at, a, at the very bottom. They are angry pseudo letters to the Asian lady killers written by a mob of nonconformist anti-Anglo orientals, mostly male. One of the titles was called Stop Masturbating in My Culture which I remembered for its captivating title. I don't agree with most of the assumption that these people make. I think the quote-unquote Asian fetish is reciprocated with a white fetish, one that I'm admittedly guilty of. Inter uh, integration of cultures lead to heightened possibilities of understanding and harmony among people. Though not the only, interracial marriage and dating is a pr premier form of such cultural integration. I have some close friends that would side with these authors when it comes to interracial dating where the guy is Asian and the girl is white. In my experience, dating has always been frustrating uh, with both white and Asian women, but it doesn't mean I've never had success with dating women without color. Sure, generally being a white guy may give you an advantage in the dating pool, but by arguing this point, you're singling out only one of the main points of attraction that a woman might may consider. Uh, examples are body type, teeth alignment, height, etc. So why am I writing this? I, am an, I had an experience yesterday where I was reminded of the phrase stop masturbating in my culture but in a very different way. I was at a birthday dinner for a friend with whom I don't share many mutual friends with. My pr probabilities would have it. I ended up sitting with a mutual friend and a set of new friends Anyway, to make a long story short, there was this very pretty non-Asian, I think she was a white girl, uh, sitting among us, and it turns out she was a big time tattoo con connoisseur. She had some very nice ukiyo-e type tattoos on her arm, and many le leading into her undergarments. So inevitably, we, we actually it was my friend, uh, and she got into a conversation about her current tattoo she's working on. It's a Japanese style folding fan with a design of a cherry tree with its flower petals falling. I made a comment saying it's morbid since falling cherry tree petals symbolize death and the frailness of life. Her reply to the comment was which which was no it's not hinted that she didn't understand what I meant. So to simply shoot the shit I asked her why she decided on a cherry tree which will consume a whole third of her back when finished, as a centerpiece. I was anticipating answers filled with admiration towards the poetic aesthetics of Matsuo Basho or uh, Makura no Soshi, or maybe even the prose of Lady Murasaki or a haiku or two. Maybe this conversation would turn into a game of Renga. Instead, she replied with a story about how her friend came up with the design and she likes Japanese things, and you know, cherry trees are big in Japan. I really like that song performed by Alphaville, Big in Japan, 
but you might as well get Andy Warhol's ch Campbell Chicken Noodle Soup on your butt if you if being a national icon was a qualifier to have a place on your body. Plus, Andy Warhol is much bigger artist than your friend is. Of course, I kept myself in check and tried to smile with a, oh, that's cool, thinking maybe I'm overreacting. I mean, she seemed like a wonderful and interesting person, and I'm being sincere. She had not said or done anything remotely bothersome or unladylike, and though she seemed a little bored, she would smile and laugh at people's unfunny jokes to be polite. I was glad when the subject was changed and we got to focus on a new set of things. I know I shouldn't get offended, but as I was working today, I was getting the same feeling thinking about that encounter as a feeling I got after seeing The Last Samurai in light of rave reviews I was getting from my friends. They were telling me about how so Japanese the film was. I should have known that the film was a superficial miss of the Japanese portrait when the Japanese calligraphy on the movie poster actually read Bushido, The Way of the Warrior, instead of the translation of the title, The Last Samurai as I'm sure everybody that doesn't read Japanese presumed. That movie effectively illustrated the glory and stealth of the sa samurai, but Tom Cruise certainly did not dive into how religion and philosophy or even poetry plays a role in the soldier's concept of life and his for lack of English equivalent word or phrase, the word kakugo. They did However, show a tree, tree with the falling flower petals as the last sight uh, Katsumoto, the chief protagonist, sees as, as he draws his last breath. I will give them some kudos for that, though I'm sure 90% of the people watching missed its meaning. And don't even get me started on the last translation. I refuse to watch Memoirs of a Geisha for the same exact reason. There is a recent film that I saw that compares this age-old epitome of ephemeral beauty with a soldier's life. Though it is a World War II film, Otokotachi no Yamato beautifully allegorizes the duty of the emperor's seaman with the life of the cherry blossom. You should see it once it's dubbed in English. I'm not sure if that ever uh, came out actually. Um, but yeah, great film. My point here is that I find it kind of offensive that someone would take the sensational aesthetics of a culture that I consider mine and re-represent it for the masses without first consuming and acculturating the core of the philosophy and psyche that makes something or someone culturally Japanese in the first place. They're perpetuating the cycle of watering down the sacred meaning of my people. With your matter-of-fact, confident ignorance, with grand displays of cinematic presentation or apparently but not really insightful graph under the skin. You can't translate the Kokin Wakashu into clever mise-en-scene or lazily approximate the meaning behind an archetypical icon. The understanding must unfold from within. Until then, you're masturbating in my culture, self-indulging when you shouldn't feel comfortable doing so with the company of thousands of years of specific human identity and tradition. Maybe I'm being a hypocrite. I shouldn't listen to country western without ever having to work in the cotton fields or dance in northern Seoul when I've never worked in the mines of northern Britain. I shouldn't cut off, cuff my pants because I've never hitchhiked across the Americas. But then again, I read, I ask, I research, I learn, I know, I understand, I empathize with the cultures that I borrow from. I can articulate their significance and demonstrate the integration I have partaken. I can explain to you how they have transformed me and maybe then I deserve to show it. I really hope that that girl never reads this bit or watches this video for that matter. It's really not a rant towards her but a general one. Regardless of what I've said, I think she's a very sweet I think she's very sweet and don't deserve this kind of crucifixion that this entry is. So uh, let me know what you guys think of what I have said and um, leave a comment. Thanks. Bye-bye.